We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. When you're in the presence of that narcissistic individual, do you ever get the feeling that that person is down on your case? I mean, to the point where they just don't like you. How many times have you felt that way? Narcissists can come toward you and you can just pick up on the fact that they're easily frustrated by you. They'll question your decisions. I mean, all the way down the little small minutia type of decisions. They can ignore you when you don't go along with their preferences or desires or interpretations. They're not interested in your input. And sometimes you can think to yourself, hey, look, all I have to do with this person is just show up and here comes the invalidation. They make it very clear that person doesn't like me. They don't care for my company. They don't like what I represent. And they're not at all bashful about letting me know that. How many times has that happened? And unfortunately, you can see that this is an incredibly uh, common kind of uh, a way of doing business with that narcissistic person. Now, understanding this, there's one quality about you that I want you to be aware of that the narcissist dislikes the most, okay? You know what it is? Very simple, the narcissist dislikes you because of your independence. They don't want you to be an independent person. They're highly self-absorbed, and in their mind, they're self-impressed. They have an attitude of entitlement about how the world is supposed to treat them. And so narcissists, in their own mind, this doesn't have to match up with reality, but in their mind, they've decided, hey, look, I make sense, you don't. I understand how things should be in ways that you can't possibly uh, appreciate or comprehend. Therefore, I have to stay in control. I have to have the ultimate say when it comes to life between you and me. By default then, you can see that knowing that they think this way, they like you only to the extent that you conform to them only to the extent that you defer, only to the extent that you keep your opinions and preferences to yourself. And then the uh, when you uh, choose not to be that way, if it just happens that way, your lack of acquiescence to them bothers them beyond any kind of common sense explanation. When you say, well, I'm my own separate and independent person, there are all sorts of behaviors that they're going to come at you with that indicates it says, I don't like it when you are independent. I don't like it when you're, on, you're your own separate self. They will interrupt you. They'll refuse to speak uh, positively to you or about you. They can be easily critical whenever you show yourself to be separate and distinct. They'll hold grudges if you don't conform to them agitation and irritability and annoyance just pops out. And we're not talking about because of problematic matters. We're talking about the fact that you simply are not uh, uh, the version of you that they say you're supposed to be. They can micromanage you and let you uh, try to guide you over to the way that they think things ought to be. They can uh, point blank offer ugly and mean insults toward you as you show yourself to be independent. They can rage. They can speak poorly about you behind your back to other individuals. They can be curt and abrupt. You know the, you know the routine. And like I say, the more you show yourself to be a separate, independent individual, then the more they conclude you're not a likable person. And, uh, and, and they just keep coming back to that thought inside their mind. I have to stay in control of you. You being independent is not a good idea. At least that's how they think. Now, let's understand and underscore one sad but very prominent truth about narcissism. And that is 
the entire pattern of narcissism is built upon delusional thinking, okay? Um, when you show yourself to be different or other, the delusion in their mind is, well, to them they think it proves that they're better and you just have to admit it. And, and you can't just say, hey, look, it just, it's nothing more, nothing less than us not being on the same page. Let's not make it any bigger than it has to be. But you can see that, uh, that they just can't go in that direction. And it's important for you to understand that their inability to accept you and your independence is driven by their own inability to come to terms with who they are. You see, at some point, they show themselves to be independent from the powers that be in their life, and it didn't go too well, or at least in their mind it didn't. They knew that there were people that just uh, were going to judge them and be condescending toward them or try to fit them into a mold and not be very trustworthy. And so what they did is they grew in age rather than thinking, well, I need to go ahead and learn how to be comfortable with my own self. No, they decided instead, well, if I can become the one who controls the narrative, then you see everything uh, goes uh, really well. So they have to be in control based on that kind of logic because in their mind, if they're not in control, they collapse. That's what's going on inside the narcissist. Now, you'll come toward them and through word or deed, you might imply, but the bottom line is I am my own separate person. I have distinct preferences. I have distinct little idiosyncrasies and habits. I have my own distinct opinions. I have my own distinct life experiences that have informed the way that I will live. I have my own distinct lifestyle habits and preferences, my own distinct interpretations, my own distinct ways of approaching my simple life tasks and responsibilities. And when you come toward them, to you that makes common sense, but when you come toward them with that kind of mindset that says, hey, look, I'm just different. I'm, I'm my own independent person. What they hear is very different from what you might imply. The narcissist, when they sense that you are too independent, all they hear is, you're rejecting me, aren't you? And you're telling me that I'm wrong. You're telling me that I'm no good. You're telling me that I'm unnecessary. You must think that I'm a, a deficient person. And I've got news for you. That's not the case. And, and you're over there thinking, that's not how I'm thinking. But what they're doing is they're projecting so much of their own unfinished business onto you. Again, uh, going back, they never did really have the permission, if you will, uh, to think that it's okay for me to be my own separate and distinct person. Conformity, duty, and obligation, uh, and filtering your life through everybody else, the dominant people, that's the language that they learn. Now, sometimes they became very uh, rebellious against that. Other times they can say, well, I'll just, like I say, I'll be the one that decides how things are supposed to be. But these are troubled ind individuals on the inside, and it doesn't even dawn on them to think, you know, Maybe all of this distinction that we each bring to the equation, maybe that's a good thing. But instead, what they're thinking is, well, but I've been looking at you all along as being my source of supply. And uh, it, it, it illustrates to you when you show yourself to be too independent that they think of you as little more than a prop. You're a player on their stage. <laughs> You're not allowed to have your own script. In fact, they're, uh, they could come toward you with the thought, and they may not put it quite in these words, but the thought is, don't you know what your role is in my life? I'm supposed to be the director, of course. Haven't you read that script? You're supposed to dance my dance. You're supposed to read my lines that I have written for you. You're supposed to know what your uh, position is in my life so that I can be okay. I can't afford for you to be independent. Now, those of you who are pretty astute in psychological matters will realize 
Hey, Dr. C, that sounds a whole lot like they, they have a really strong codependent agenda when they approach me. And if you were to think that, I would say, bingo, you're 100% right. These individuals are reactors. They don't have their own internal strength to draw upon. And, and as a result, uh, they just uh, make the assumption, I'm going to collapse if someone doesn't prop me up. Now, despite their protest about your independence and the fact that they say, well, I don't like you, if that's the way it's going to be, it's, it's obviously going to be crucial for you to forge your, your own identity based on your own free choices. That's what we're talking about when we say independence. And, and the narcissist is too afraid to think, and that could include you having a goodness and a loyalty toward them. They're, they're afraid that if you're too independent, then they're going to be left in your dust. But let's, let's underscore, you're no one's thing. You're no one's possession. You're not a robot to be programmed. Uh, you're under no obligation to lay your true self down in service to their neurosis, okay? So stay true to your own independence. And when the narcissist says, well, if that's the case, then I don't like you anymore, then my response is going to be, I'm very aware of that. I have a very different interpretation about that than you might have, but whatever they do when they come with you with that, I don't like you anymore kind of pronouncement, understand it tells us a whole lot more about who they are than about who you are. Keep, uh, you know, keep free choices flowing and allow your distinctives to be there and then know that it, it probably is going to mean that you're gonna need to find some individuals who will say, I like the independent you. I hope that you can say that about yourself first and foremost. I hope that videos such as this can give you some good things to think about, give you some good awareness of what you might be up against. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so, and we'll keep more videos coming at you. Uh, just uh, know that I, I love doing this, and I hope that the, uh, uh, the educational value is something that can make an impact on your life. Sometimes when you're going through some of the strain and difficulty that this can generate, you might find that it would be helpful for you to be in therapy. And uh, you know that I've been sponsored for years now by the people at betterhelp.com. It's a whole team of licensed professional therapists. Their service is online. We found out since the, since the pandemic that can be effective. It's certainly affordable and accessible. If you have a need for therapy and somebody to help you sift this out, I would strongly encourage you to go in that direction. You go beneath the link that we have beneath this uh, video to their, uh, to their site, and you'll get a 10% discount on the first month. Likewise, I have therapeutic courses, and these are meant to help guide you in ways towards the healthy way of life. Each course has like 25 or more videos with written documentation, and uh, uh, I put a lot of work into it. It would require work from you, but uh, they too have been very beneficial for individuals. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making healthy connections. This is me about establishing your uh, healthy boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite their uh, wanting uh, desire to control you. We also have my webinars, which are of, of a much different kind of variety. And we have our podcast. We have many articles on our website. Uh, we have my books, plenty of resources. Okay, the, you, you, you're in the presence of that narcissist and they're basically saying, I don't like you. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not exactly thrilled with, uh, with the way things are going right now either. But understand that when they do so, there's so much behind the scenes that goes into that. And like I say, it's about who they are, much more so than about who you are. I'm hoping that as you understand that, it brings you to a place of objectivity. And in doing so, it allows you to move forward to you having a sense of peace that they simply have none to draw upon. I hope that you can find your peace.